Hi guys, welcome back. If you haven't seen my last video, I'm going to link it at the end of this video because it kind of leads into this video. So it's important to watch that one too in order to understand what I'm getting at in this video. So in this video, I'm going to talk about step two for starting disulfiram treatment for Lyme disease. And I'm just going to speak about my experience and what I've been reading from feedback from people on groups who have also been on disulfiram. I'm not going to get into all the technicalities because it's hard for even me to understand. So I'm just going to speak on experience as someone who has been on disulfiram for two months now. And excuse my messy bed in the background. It's basically my home at the moment. You'll find out why now when I speak about my disulfiram experience. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing, but it's not easy, just like any other treatment. So once you have done step one and replaced your products, that's all I'm going to say. You have to watch the video because you have to be educated and clued up on how disulfiram can be dangerous. It's not dangerous, but it can be if you don't follow the steps correctly. So once you have done all of that, what you need to establish is your dosage. And this is different for everyone. So I'm going to say how I personally establish my dosage with my doctor. I recommend you do it with your doctor or your LLMD. I establish mine via muscle testing and also he has a lot of knowledge on treating Lyme. But I always recommend muscle testing. People out there have their opinions. Mostly people who are against muscle testing are people who haven't used muscle testing or experienced it. So I'm going to do a video on it. But that is how I establish my dosage and it has worked for me. Muscle testing always works for me, just so you know. But if you're not a fan of muscle testing or you don't believe in it or whatever the case may be, you can establish your dosage with your doctor. And the rule of the game is to start low and slow. This is generally how it works best for people. So I started, and I'm gonna correct myself now because I said that I started on 125 milligrams, but I was actually incorrect. The full dosage of one tablet, one of the tablets that I'm on, is 400 milligrams, and I was doing half a tablet, which is 200 milligrams. So it wasn't 125 milligrams. I started on 200 milligrams every third day, and I did that for about a month. I did take a week's break in between just because I thought I was going to get my wisdom teeth removed, and then they couldn't remove my wisdom teeth, so... I went back on it and then after a month I moved to 200 milligrams every second day and then I traveled back to Abu Dhabi on the 22nd of September and I think it was a couple of days after that that I started 200 milligrams every single day and so when I was taking it every third day in the very beginning I was getting reactions Sorry, my throat's got like a frog in it today. Just excuse me. So at first when I started the pill, every third day I did get reactions. I got extremely, extremely tired. I was hit with like a lot of tiredness and I was hit with some chest tightness as well, which is very usual for me with my Lyme disease. It's one of my main symptoms. I have shortness of breath and chest tightness and lung restriction, constriction, inflammation. So in the beginning, I did struggle with that, but then it faded and I was very clear headed and it was actually really easy for me after a while, which is really great. And then when I was taking it every second day, it still was really good. I still had some tight chest, but that's nothing unusual for me. And a lot of days I was feeling really good. And then when I came back to Abu Dhabi and I increased my dose to every day, I was feeling quite amazing. I was tired but I was feeling really motivated and my head was just like full of ideas and I was getting so excited about things and I was just really clear headed and happy. I was in a happy mood and I was really motivated and just full of bright ideas that I thought were the best ideas ever. <laughs> and then it started to get a bit out of control. I started to actually write, like I was writing things and I was getting so excited about my ideas and I basically started a blog, which is weird because I don't have a blog. I just started writing articles. <laughs> it sounds so stupid, but that is what happened to me. 
and one day it just got out of control. I was just too happy, too motivated, too excited, doing so many things, writing like three articles in the day. I was still feeling tired. I was still feeling, not, I had a lack of energy in my body, but my brain was just working overtime. And eventually I realized that it was getting out of control. And I spoke to the support group, the Dysulfiram support group on Facebook, and they said, oh yeah, it increases dopamine. You better watch that because it can turn into mania and it can become a psychotic episode. So that's something to watch out for on this drug. If you're feeling extremely motivated, okay, clear headedness is a good thing. And I was really enjoying it, but I'll tell you what happened just very soon after that. So I was warned and I thought, okay, I'm just gonna watch this. And the thoughts just became too much. They were out of control. And eventually I couldn't even lie still without having to jump up and write something down. It's very strange for me because I'm not extroverted. And another thing that I was doing was I was talking to people and I'm alone at home most of the time because Ross works. So I was talking to people and I was on my phone sending voice notes the whole day, just to random people. So if I got in touch with you during that time, I still love you, but I'm not usually like that and I'm not usually extroverted and I don't usually have the motivation and energy to get in touch with people and talk to them for long periods of time, sending voice notes back and forth, but that is what I was doing. And I'm kind of embarrassed about it. So what happened after that is after it got out of control, my thoughts, I started to get a headache at the back of my head, like at the base of my head, which is known with Lyme and I have had it before, but my neck was like really sore and stiff and my head was like really, really in pain and throbbing. And then I started to get hot, like very hot and I got fevers. And what else did I feel? I felt very nauseous. I felt paranoid and very anxious. And I felt like I just had a really bad hoax. I felt pressure in my head. It was almost like there was heat coming out of my ears. Don't know if you've had that feeling when you're having a Herxheimer reaction with Lyme disease, treating with Lyme disease. Often I get tinnitus and pressure in my head and then my ears feel hot, like the inside of my head is hot. It's hard to explain, but I got that feeling. And then my whole back was stiff and I was getting a tight chest. So I actually started to panic and I called Ross to come home early from work and he made me a keto low carb pizza and he fed it to me and then he made me go to sleep, which is what I did. And that was great, but I still have the tiredness and I don't have the sense of motivation anymore. In fact, my mood is really, really low at the moment. The tiredness is really extreme, actually. I should have elaborated on that when I said I have tiredness. I have extreme crushing tiredness like I feel like I've been hit by a train and I'm sleeping a lot but I'm still really really tired and I'm really really stiff all the way down my back my shoulders my neck and it's like restricting my breathing it feels restricted not to an emergency level I'm not panicked about it but it's just very uncomfortable so I did contact my doctor and he said that I need to stay on it it's a good thing his patients who have cleared their Lyme on disulfiram and really improved and feel healthy now, that is what happened to them. Not specifically that, but they had really unbearable symptoms just before they cleared. And he said that he thinks it's a positive thing. So I'm following his instructions. I'm taking it every second day now. I did take a four day break when those really horrible symptoms happened. I took a four day break. And just because I believe in keeping things honest and real here, I'm gonna tell you something embarrassing. I'm also really stinky. <laughs> That's one of the, I don't know if it's a side effect or if it's because of the die off reaction, but I'm letting off a really bad smell and it's embarrassing as well. It's not like a sweat smell. It's like a toxic smell. It's a toxic, that's all I can really describe it as. It's like chemicals, almost like chemicals. I'm also feeling really self-conscious because I have rashes around my eyes, which is something that I get with Lyme as well. But when the rash gets really bad, it starts to shrivel and it starts to kind of crinkle and it crinkles my skin around my eyes and it like creates wrinkles, but it's only because it's like dry elephant skin. That's how the rash goes. And then it starts to form wrinkles around my eye. And that's something that's really annoying me. 
and I'm really self-conscious about it as well. So I'm feeling really low at the moment. I was hoping to do a really exciting update for you guys, but I'm feeling really low at the moment. But I know that it is all part of the process and I don't see it as bad news at all. I actually see it as good news. I think this is working and I hope my next update will be more positive. And I hope that just like when I started the disulfiram and I had a reaction and then it subsided, I hope that this will also eventually subside again. The other thing that I must mention is that it's important when you're starting disulfiram to do regular liver function checkups. And that's only because some people get raised liver enzymes while they're on disulfiram. It's not common, but it is possible. So it's better to just be safe and track your liver enzymes. I was naughty and I didn't test for the first month and a half on disulfiram, but when I did test, my liver enzymes were absolutely fine, but I wouldn't recommend it. You're supposed to test after two weeks on disulfiram, and then every two weeks or every month, if your doctor says it's okay to only test every month. I was one of the lucky patients, but although it is rare, it is possible for your liver enzymes to raise on the drug. Having said that, it is not a dangerous drug. There have been some people saying to me when I post my videos about disulfiram, but it's a dangerous drug. You shouldn't be recommending this to people. It's not a dangerous drug. It's been used for, I think, 70 plus years for alcoholics with really compromised livers. And it's been used safely and successfully. So it's not a dangerous drug. You just have to monitor. Just like any other drug, it has side effects. Just like any other drug, yes, it can affect your liver. Antibiotics can affect your liver. Pharmaceuticals affect your body in all sorts of different ways. That's why it's a prescription drug. That's why you work with your doctor and you monitor how it goes for you because everybody's body is different. I always say this. And everyone has different reactions to different medications, no matter what the medication is. So that's why it's important to monitor while you're on disulfiram and to work with a knowledgeable professional. If you don't have the money to work with a knowledgeable professional and go to regular appointments, there are support groups as well to help you through. And I actually did my liver test independently in South Africa. You can just go into the labs and order the test and do it and get the results yourself. So I actually did that independently. So there are other options, but I would firstly recommend working alongside a doctor or an experienced professional. The only reason why I did it independently because at the time I didn't want to pay for an extra consultation in order to order the tests. So to recap, first step to starting disulfiram is to know what products to avoid and to know what foods to avoid. That's in my first video and I will link it at the end of this video. Second step as we discussed today is to determine what dosage you're going to do and the important thing is to start low and slow and then slowly ramp up your dosage just like i did i started one month taking 200 milligrams every third day the next month i did 200 milligrams every second day and now i'm ramp ramping up to every day i had a big reaction when i ramped up to every day so i took it down again and i'm taking it every second day again i took a little bit of a break four day break in between now i'm back to every second day and I actually hope to going back to every day very soon because my doctor says I'm good to go and I can do that. He doesn't seem to be worried about the reaction because with past patients, they've gone through similar things and then it's been beneficial for them. In my next disulfiram video, I'm obviously gonna be updating you guys and I'm also gonna be telling you what you can do to minimize your Herxheimer reactions while on disulfiram, as well as minimize buildup of things like ammonia while you're on disulfiram, just to make the journey a little bit more comfortable for you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that you found this helpful and I am going to go back to resting now. Bye, see you next time.